me, that's, that's the beginning part of the power of all this. But then if I go filter instead, oh, let me, let me show one more thing then. Um, if we look through here, I don't want, I really don't want that bit at the end. So I'm just going to go from there. And I'm going to say, I don't want that. It's never going to be used. I don't want him turning around looking to the camera. So I just go, don't show it to me anymore. And so from this point on, that clip no longer has all the turn at the end. It just, as soon as I say, hide the rejected. You see, if I show this, all clips, we have my rejected bit at the end. Hide rejected. And the dirty, nasty bits of garbage that I don't want to see while I'm searching, searching for the clips that I do want to use are all there, uh, is gone and out of view. The rest of the media is still available. So you can take a long clip, sub uh, range, add a player keyword range to that, to the part that you want to use, and then um, lost my train of thought mid train. That's not awful. That's, that's, that's the inevitable side of, side of getting older. In actual fact, I think it's because I, I finished a book in a week last week um, on the uh, conquering the metadata foundations of Final Cut Pro 10 and I'm still suffering from it. I could get away with that when I was a kid. Um, once, we have, once we have some keywords applied, and I, I think I want to go back and apply uh, these three, I want to apply keyword uh, command K for the keyword collection. I'm just going to go Tim Draxel, new keyword. And automatically, the first nine keywords that you enter will automatically fill those slots. Uh, or you can type something in, or you can go back and change it and remove it. If I don't want that one anymore, I can just remove it as from my keyword sh shortcut, keyword shortcut, and um, it'll be fine. Won't happen anyway. So now I should have a Tim bin, a Tim Draxel bin, and there's a whole lot more I could put into here in um, in here. But I could just pick up more 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 Tims. And as soon as I've got multiple keywords, I can start to build. Keyword, I can build uh, these filters, these smart, which ultimately can become smart collection because the only difference between a filter you use to find the clip once and a, and a keyword collect, a smart collection is that you click on this button here and make it a smart collection, which means it's persistent. Anything that meets the criteria, no matter where they're from, will be included in that smart collection. And we have an enormous amount of power in the smart collection that I simply don't have time to go through. But you can say, I only want to see things that are rejected that match Sound of Music. Well, that, nothing's going to match that. So, come back up into the parent. So, so nothing matches both Sound of Music and Rejected. Favorited, you've got that choice as well. Um, no, nope, but I want to come down to the media type. So, video with audio, stills only. So, only show me stills. Nothing there. Because uh, I don't have stills. But, uh, if it's stabilised or not, you can come up here and look at your keywords and say, well, I don't really want that keyword. I don't want that keyword because these are just folders that came in. Uh, I don't want the, that keyword. I don't want that keyword. Um, and I do want those two keywords. And I just keep building up this smart collection from all of the different types of media that, um, that are in there, whether it's one person, two people, close up, wide. Because one of the things that we'll analyse for is whether there is a face in the, in the shot or multiple faces in the shot. It's not facial detection per se, it's more like Premiere Pro will do. It will say, yes, there is a face in this shot, or no, there is not a face in this shot. Or there are two people in this shot, or three people in this shot. And then from that anal analysis, uh, they will derive or they will infer what type of shot it is. Uh, essentially from deciding the size of the face in the shot will determine how wide the shot is. Um, these can all be removed and included and combi combined and the format info is very, is very um, more power, much more powerful than you think because if you want to find only your media then it, that is uh, frame size is not um, 720 by 480 then that media should show up because all of my media is PAL. It's a different size. Um, so these keyword collections, let me sort of come into another project where I have actually entered some useful keywords and one project. 
And so for here, I've just gone through and I have all the shots that were around the base camp, um, all the shots that were in the area near, the, near where we started out. Anything that's got a lot of green in it, I put into a keyword collection. Anything that's got mountains in it, I put into a keyword collection. Anything that's on my bus shots, which is most of the time because we didn't have that much time. Uh, anything that's got a river in it, I've got all that. So if I wanted to have something that had, uh, let me come back up to the top level, filtering, because you're always filtering down. You're filtering down from the top. You're not finding out of the crowd. You've got to have everything, then you're just limiting the filter down to what we want. So it includes, um, well, I think that would work nicely on the keywords, in fact. So I don't want keywords, but I want uh, any keyword, any combination of key base camp, and let's see if I've got anything with mountains. Base camp and river, maybe that should, that should give me a... So that's now filtered down to anything that matches those three, and only those three filters. But if I wanted to match all of those filters, it has to match all three, and there are no clips that match all three. Yeah, there's no clips that match all three. Uh, or I can say I only want that at, at 1280 HD or I only want the clips that match green and Friday afternoon or green and real three. Any of these combinations build these very powerful uh, keyword collections that you can, you can work with. Um, Keyword collections replace bins and range-based keyword inks replaces subclips. Absolutely, yes. They, these are both superior matches for things that were inferior. <laughs> if you want to work exactly the, the way you did, like if you want to, I want to create a bin and I want to drag media to it, like, just like in, in you know, Final Cut Pro Classic. <laughs> what, what's, what is what automatic and just tell it? Depending on whether you turn it on or off, yeah, you have to actually actively tell it you want the analysis to be done, and you can do it when you when you ingest it, or you can do it at any time in the future when you you don't want to ingest it. Um, so, a new keyword collection is untitled, and so this is new bin. Just for those who people want it, and now I've just got to find something that's got media in it. So my entire project. And I'll start sort of putting stuff into new bin. And I say, okay, well, this, this is, can't all be good. So I just want the, the pull out there. So you can see why I went into post production rather than production, can't you? I'm a really good cameraman. <laughs> so I only want to put that part in as a, as the, as a uh, new, into my new bin bin. And so only that part of the, the, that range is now in there which is just my pull out. Oh. Is that the first and last clip we're looking at? This is, this is um, the full the duration of the clip. When you're in list view, your viewer up the top shows you, shows you the entire duration uh, and you're seeing two parts of that close to the end and the beginning. They, then they're totally dynamic. Um, the other view that you have is the film strip view, and I can't say that I'm a huge fan of the film strip view. Um, mostly because things wrap around the end, and I've got, you know, I'm skimming along here to the end, and then to go to the next bit, I've sort of got to suddenly go down here, and it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work for me. And but in that view, you can determine how frequently the keyframes appear down here by adjusting the. If you go down to up to all, you get one keyframe per per uh, per clip. Uh, so you can scrub through that entire duration, but in, you only got one. Um, so we can go, keep dragging stuff from one bin to another, make ranges, drag it to the bin, create create bin co uh, create collections that way, or make smart collections. Smart collections are automatically created if you do analysis for stabilizing, uh, for an extreme shake or, or a steady shot. Um, that lets you know that is metadata and that's a keyword that gets applied to, to that clip. Um, there were a couple of things on events that I, went, I jumped over. Um, 